Did you guys talk about it already? No, no not no, a lot. Already. I tried. I was like, no, we tried. It's so funny because I feel like before you get your role, he's like kind of like so trying to be like because we don't want to talk about that. Okay. Hi, hi everyone. <laughs> Hello, it's Sarah from Hardcover Hearts, and I'm here with my book club, my in real life book club. I'm delighted to have Nikki and Lydia here today to talk with us about um, book clubs, um, to talk about the books that we're reading, which we are super aggressively uh, reading. Aggressively. <laughs> Ducks Newberry Port. We read through the shortlist for the Man Booker Prize, and so we, are, which is now just the Booker, no man. Good. Good. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we are reading Kishot by Salman Rushdie. And so we're doing them together because obviously this is a tome that we need to kind of get through. So let me start first and have my friends introduce themselves. We'll start with Nikki. All right. Oh, that's Nikki. cool. And um, I'm happy to be here. I love so watching your vlog. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about what kind of the books do you do you like to read? What are you, what how do you think of yourself as a reader? I tend to go for um women of color books actually. Mm. So actually this book group has really made me like step outside of myself and read some men <laughs> <laughs> and read a lot of things that I wouldn't ordinarily read. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um I went through I think I spent two years reading solely women of color before this club. And so I it's been- I had no idea. Did you know, yeah. did you know, did you know that? I did not know. Yeah. I did so, not know. So there's like a, I'm learning there's so a much hole about in, in some of the reading that I've done. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I'm also someone who I like, like if I like the book, I'm gonna keep going. If mm -hmm. I, it's not working for me, I let it go. And I don't feel bad about that because um, I used to carry around this tote bag that said so many books, so little time. And so I really true. feel that way. I feel like you need to be, you need to capture me and I yep. need to be in it. That's right. um, but what do I like? I think I like books that, uh, characters that are kind of quirky and outsider others, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. I like that other perspective. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. And Nikki also is uh, an amazing drummer, has been a musician for, <laughs> I mean, decades. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Centuries. Yeah. Centuries. <laughs> Since time immemorial. Um, and both of these women hail from D.C. And so when I was a teenager living in Delaware, um, the D.C. scene was uh, the epitome of what, uh, cool, what was cool in the world. And to have so many women and so many strong, vibrant women coming out of and influencing the D.C. scene was just, uh, was just remarkable. So very very thrilled to um, find that I move all the way across the country <laughs> decades later and end up befriending um, two women that I admired so much from so from so oh, long that's ago. Amazing. So <laughs> yay! yay. <laughs> and um, you also do work with the uh, have done work with the Edible Garden, which is Alice Waters, um, kind of her her brainchild. Do you want to talk mm -hmm. a little yeah, bit about it's that? A school gardening and cooking program and a way to get kids involved in like understanding where their food comes from and like you know Alice always says if they grow the food and they cook the food then they'll eat the food so they're really more likely mm -hmm. to eat more vegetables and fruits and, and all of that so, so I was cool. there I was a cooking teacher there for right years. I mean like amazing right <laughs> all, right, all right Lydia you oh, can. oh boy that's a tough act to follow <laughs> <laughs> so tell me a little bit about yourself as a reader and, and all that good stuff about the books. So I'm a fiction reader. I mm -hmm. don't really do nonfiction. I try, but I fail. Don't do poetry, uh, mostly novels, some mm -hmm. short stories. I used to be an avid New Yorker reader, like cover to cover, um, unforgiving. Um, now I've come to my senses. <laughs> At age 54, in my infinite wisdom, I have learned that life's too short and it's just silly. So okay. that now, that now applies to novels, so I used to do the same thing. I would just soldier mm -hmm. through, God damn it, you know. <laughs> but now I'm happy, and I've been encouraged by these wonderful women to <laughs> cut bait when, you know, when it's just not turning up. We try. Mm -hmm. We really give, we try in good faith. Mm -hmm. um, we come in with positive attitudes, mm -hmm. and sometimes it just doesn't work out. Mm -hmm. So that's fine, and I love that. Mm -hmm. But I've always been a reader ever since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I have young adult daughters and they have not been consistently readers. They're, you know, their whole lives are just both kind of getting back to it now. Oh, 
but it's really making me think about how being a reader as a kid is so. It's it, you're going to just come back to it even. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. So. And then um, Lydia works in public policy and does amazing work in San Francisco uh, through the mayor's office mm -hmm. um, with our house, with the housing crisis that we have. I'm sure it's well known globally of mm -hmm. uh, um, San Francisco's challenges. And so incredibly. And you also um, were an editor in right. a very famous book out of the D.C. The DC scene. Right. Could you tell us a little bit about that, please? Well, I had a very small role. I'm kind of a compulsive copy editor. It's one of my character flaws that I have to fix. <laughs> Not a flaw. mistake I see. <laughs> um, but uh, that um, was put to good use when I worked with Cynthia Connolly on her band in DC book, which um, was an all women editorial crew. Sharon Chesler and Leslie Clegg were the other women involved. And um, it's a really great collaborative project many, many years ago, but that book is still. She's torn Keeps on, on it right now. Yeah, it's just <laughs> and I'll put a I'll put a little I'll do a little insert of the of the image so that people and I'll put a link where people can can purchase the book if they're so interested. Yeah, I mean it's been reprinted a bunch of times mm -hmm. and yeah, it's a really fantastic uh, chronicle. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Wonderful. All right, and then we are go ahead. Yeah, but I was going to say, hearing you, I realized like I didn't really mention what books like I read novels, I mm -hmm. read memoirs. I read nonfiction. I've kind of slowed down on nonfiction. Mm. Oh, we kind of, we're kind because of busy. Because we're, we're yeah. busy with <laughs> yes. novels, and, yes. um, but I always have a stack of memoir on the mm -hmm. side that I'm kind of working my way through. It's like, like modern era? Like yeah, contemporary. Modern, contemporary uh -huh. ones, yeah. Like mm -hmm. I have Debbie Harry right now. I have oh, yeah. you know, <laughs> all the music ones that come out and then yeah. um, others as well. Like mm -hmm. Saeed Jones, I think, is on my list right oh, now. I've got which to read that. amazing. That, the Patty Smith one. Patty Smith. The Patty Smith. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's just. It's a lot of stuff. A lot. Yes. <laughs> yes. And I also wanted to say, um, this is also, you'll notice this is not my normal background. This is not from my house. This I wish my it were. Library. <laughs> it's my house. <laughs> Wouldn't that be we're great? We're in the black section and the white section. <laughs> yes. The gold section over there. They, this is the, we're at the wing, which is um, a women's workspace uh, that I am a member of. And I love to come here and I love to just read. And uh, they have a, all the books that they curate here are all wim by women and so it's and sure. they can be borrowed uh, and it's just a great place to come and, and relax and meet up with my friends and have book club so let's get started and talk about so we have a very few rules about our book club um, the first and most important thing is that we do not say whether we like or dislike the book until the very, very, very end. And the reason for that is we really want to, ex we really want to explore. And there've been times when I've come in here and thought, I don't like the book. And then I hear these brilliant women talk and then I'm like, oh, I missed that. I didn't see that. That's a new aspect. Maybe I, maybe I should revisit and I've, and it's helped me change my point of view on the, on the book. So, um, so we'll keep that and we'll keep that, uh, that rule going. I struggle with that rule. <laughs> yeah, someone all, struggles. struggles. <laughs> yeah. It's hard. It's, it's really harder hard. for some really people than it is for yeah. others, but <laughs> yes. Um, but, but I think it served us. It's, I think it yeah, served yeah, us yeah, well. Yeah, no, it keeps good. the conversation going. Yes. Yeah. It's it open. Yeah. yeah. Open. yeah. 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 So we are, okay. So I'll, I'll, I'll do the first mea culpa. Okay. Uh, um, I'm no further in ducks. Okay. Uh, slightly further than I was before. What page are you on? I am. Uh, I'm on three thirty-two. I'm on three oh seven. Okay, no, so I'm not that around three. Okay. Around three something. Yeah. yeah. I'm but, trying to do like twenty pages a day. It's a good idea. It's like, yeah. just like a rule of thumb, but it doesn't always happen. Yeah. yeah. So I have one at my boyfriend's house and one at home. You have two <laughs> copies. Oh, one's from the library okay. and one I actually bought. I never buy books. She never buys books. This <laughs> is a big deal. All my books from the library. Um, Usually if I read a book and I own it, I give it away unless I really, really love it and then I keep it. But I bought it after our last meeting because I was so inspired by how closely you were reading it. It made me really want to pay more attention and yeah. take more time, which when you have a thousand page book, 998 page book from the library and you only have three weeks, you're going to rush. That's yeah. just what's going to happen. Right. Yeah. Right. So I and then we are also in Kishot by Salman Rushdie. Uh, and I'm doing an audio. Oh, yeah, I actually had to go into the bookstore the other day to look at the 
hard copy to figure okay. out how far I was. See, this is a dedicated book club. You'll, you'll notice. I There's locked my bike up and ran in. I ran in just a quick peek. Ran right out again. Nobody stole my bike. Yay. Oh, yeah, I was lucky. Really, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I was hoping that one of you would have the physical copy today yeah, I know. so I can kind of like look at it and assess. Well, it's unusual that we're all reading the audio or listening, I should say, to yeah. the audio because that doesn't often happen. No. I don't like it as much usually i always feel a little um discombobulated mm. like i don't know where I, like you can't you can't leaf through and find mm. a spot yeah, you can't yeah, leaf yeah. go back and find yeah. reference yeah. to a character or see what you missed when the loud truck went by and you you know so i always feel a little unmoored in audio yeah what's so interesting about this book is it's almost there's there's themes that are connected and there's, there's, it's like there's a conversation that's happening between these two. So, so tell me, tell yeah, us more. So I kind of, I was thinking about it more with the ducks Newberry. It's, it's kind of, it's an examination for sure of this contemporary moment that we're mm -hmm. in through this really cerebral version of it. And mm -hmm. then, and it, with Kishote, it's almost like similarly, um, a commentary on this contemporary moment, but through this road trip narrative, you know, right. and, mm -hmm. um, and I feel like they, they, they have, they're like almost in conversation with each other mm -hmm. as I'm reading them. And one is kind of the moving version of it. And one is the stationary oh. mm -hmm. version of this contemporary. Mm -hmm. And they're extreme, like she's extremely stationary. Like mm -hmm. she's like kind of trapped in her life. Right. Mm -hmm. And he's more, they, I should say are, extremely unmoored and like exactly. yeah 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 but it's true and um, then there's also the themes of like um of the drug of the oxycontin mm -hmm. and and mm -hmm. the and the opioid mm -hmm. uh, um it is showing up in different ways mm -hmm. um and I, I think that's super super interesting mm -hmm. i think it just well i mean i was thinking about both of these books they're both Especially Kishot, very um, critical of the of America. Yeah, oh yes, right? the oh yes. You know, people eat too much. They have too many guns. They're bigoted. They, their cars are too big. You know, just like it's a very left kind of liberal privileged position. Mm -hmm. And similarly, she as a narrator is having those same observations, the mm -hmm. same themes and the same critiques, mm -hmm. but from a really different position. So, was, you know, like if you were of a certain political persuasion, you might not appreciate all this crit criticism and all this um, you know, disparaging of, mm -hmm. of, you know, our freedoms. Yeah, it, but I think the difference is, I think Kishot is grounded in the experience of the two, the, right. the characters, whereas in Ducks, it's, it's all kind of pontification, you know, in her head, right. you know, mm -hmm. um, right. uh, which, I don't know, there's nothing wrong with either way, but... When it's also nice yeah. that it's that it is a man, uh, a man and a woman, and so we're getting two perspectives on the same scenario, same situations, or the same themes. Mm -hmm. um, one is very worldly, world travel. The other is is very insular in this Ohio. Even though she's traveled the world, she has a past, uh, mm -hmm. but it's very. It seems like that past was very distant, mm -hmm. um, yeah. and it's not her reality today. Yeah. Um, so I find uh, it's. It's an interesting juxtaposition mm -hmm. and interplay. Mm -hmm. And even moments like um, Sancho is mm -hmm. talking about snoring, you know, like the different types of snoring, like mm -hmm. the way it just goes into this like long list of the types <laughs> right, of snoring, right, 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 right. which reminded me yeah, of yeah, Dustin yeah, yeah. you know, like the way that there's like lists. Right. Yeah. And kind yeah. Of Cataloging of everything. Yeah. Of like this like American condition. I do, I do find that the characters are very well drawn in the Rishti book and mm -hmm. Kim, whereas we don't really get a good sense. I mean, everything is so hidden in Ducks Newbury Port. It's this, it's this, um, it's all from, from it's her pers it's filtered, yeah, great, yeah. Yeah. filtered through her perception mm -hmm. of who right. these characters are, mm -hmm. as opposed to a truly, you know, kind of this abstracted kind of uh, narration. Yeah, it's, which is really fascinating to think that a book that's so voluminous, you know, there's so much that you still don't know. Right. Yes. I mean, Even she does quote her children directly, especially yeah. when they say amusing 
mm-hmm. things. Mm-hmm. Um, and she gives people voice, but yeah, she's so, it's, it's so much about her own experience. And mm-hmm. Kishot, there's a bunch of different people with all living very different, very real experiences, and we're hearing it directly from them. Yeah. We were talking on the way in briefly, again, because we're <laughs> so terrified. We're like, we don't want to talk about it. We can't we talk about London. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we can't talk about things until we all get, are all together. That that I it was a my sense when I first started it was like uh, I would have dumped it if it weren't for the oh, I would have dumped it because oh. it was a little too quirky. Yeah, and it was a little I just felt like, and and I will say I was heavily influenced by Prayal Segal's uh, review. Where uh, she panned it, and oh. she's one of the very few people that I read reviews from because I just because I'm I and that's something interesting to talk about. Yeah, uh, I like to go. I trust the judging of getting us to a short list, and I don't go in with any other preconceptions. I don't try to understand what what's going on with the books. I don't try to get a sense of, you know, what uh, how do people think about it? Cause I want to form my own judgment. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I ended up seeing her. I, she's uh, one of those few you just happened to come across. I did. I did on the Twitter, on the Twitter that I follow of hers. Um, and, and I, and you she just, look away. yeah, I couldn't. And she did such a, an effective pan that I was like, Oh, oh. see, I don't read see, the reviews could, because yeah. I'm really impressionable. Mm-hmm. I'm really too impressionable. So Me too. Uh, mm-hmm. interesting. I would just, if I read five different reviews, I'd be like, yeah, you're right about all of them, yeah. probably. And especially if I hadn't read the book yet. Yeah. But now I want to read that. Sometimes I'll, I, I like, when I'm close to the end, I kind of start letting myself read things yeah. about mm-hmm. it or listen to an interview with the author about yeah. it. But uh-huh. not, but I have to be fully in it yeah. before yes. and, and kind of start formulating my thinking on yeah. the book before I let somebody else yeah. add in. You know, yeah. Or else I'm done for. I know, <laughs> it's the same. Exactly. So you read that before you even started. Uh-huh. Oh. I know it's and not did my you normal. Did you read another one to like try to counteract? No, oh, no. Okay. Um, but then, then I started it, and I was just like, it's "Like yeah. you might be breaking your own rules." I know. I know. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I was really naughty. I was really that was not. We forgive you. That was not good. I won't do that again. Um, but, but I have to say, I'm enjoying it much more than I anticipated since uh-huh. I pushed through. Oh, there's, good. there's more. There's more to hold on to. Um, when it was just mm-hmm. when it was just Kishote and his, and kind of thinking about uh, you know and, and his kind of delusions and everything, it, mm-hmm. I, it was very uncomfortable. I I thought, oh, why why do we need to see another uh, in this time where women are so victimized? Why do we need to to go into another head of another man who Absolutely. is who is obsessing Objectify. about and objectifying yeah, yeah, yeah. women? This is this where I want to spend my time? Yeah. Is this what I want to do? Um, I don't need to hear this voice again. Yeah. I feel like I've been inundated with this voice. And so I was, I was this close to dumping and I thought, no, 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 let me at least keep going until, and we'll make a decision together if yeah. we, if we move yeah. forward or not. Yeah. And it's given, there's a lot more there. There's a lot, there's a mm-hmm. lot. Uh, and yeah. I think it's the introduction of the other characters, which are rounding it out and creating up mm-hmm. yeah. more depth and more interest for me. Yeah. yeah. Well, he's really creating like the wor- a world yes. right. and that um and I think that's again like what kind of separates it from Ducks Newberry Port because mm-hmm. Ducks Newberry Port is like a world but it's, it's her kitchen and her minivan kitchen. it's a small mm-hmm. world and his yeah. world is like yeah. global and yeah. like, it, it deals with like identity and it deals with like movement and like America the and America mm-hmm. and the moment and um and that beginning part I, I was kind of worried like oh is it going to be like the this guy obsessing over this actress for the whole book, yes, you know, right. in his head, like kind of more like that's right. like, yes. oh no. So I actually, right after we decided to get it, yeah. I like loaded up the audiobook and then started it. And then I was just unable to listen to it. Uh-huh. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, interesting. Like I would like go do other, I'd be like, oh, I should really listen to that while I'm washing the dishes. And I just didn't feel like it. There's right. something about, like, I don't want to deal with this character. I know. Right well, now. He's, it took me a while. Yeah. He's, he's, he's not insane. that interesting. He's yeah. insane. And he's, um, you know, a lot of the stuff about America is very kind of boilerplate. You mm-hmm. know, like, again, like our fast food and our highways and the Midwest and the fat people. And the, the guns. Then the guns. It's like, okay, this is familiar territory. And he's not that interesting. He's, delu- he's deluded, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, 
And it's also very quirky and it's very, um, not quirky, it's, it's kind of gimmicky. Yes. So you're very aware, not that I'm an expert on Don Quixote, but you, you get the, you started to see really early on, like, oh, mm -hmm. you know, and again, this is my pet peeve when you think about the writer and his big long table and the index cards and he's like <laughs> strategically yeah. mapping like mm -hmm. the gimmick, like how do I make this work and the structure and you really feel that. Um, and you see it coming. Oh, and then the son's name is Pancho. Mm -hmm. is Sancho. What was Sancho. it? Pancho. Sancho. Sancho. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And then, you know, it's just, but I, I'm glad I stuck with it because yeah. it does get fleshed out and you realize his voice, he's, he's not the central voice. No, thank God. Um, yeah. And, but. But, I, but I mean, I'm still holding, I'm still holding. I'm, there are moments like I am laughing out loud. Yeah. yeah. At it. You know, there are definitely like funny moments and um, I'm going to keep going with it, of course. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, I don't know, I always, Salman Rushdie, he's, he's always so clever, you know, it's like there's always like this like overly <laughs> clever, like, or, or attempt at like cleverness. Right. Like, that, um, that is really, uh, it's like, it's annoying. overt. It, well. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm waiting. I'm just like, is, you, is this a good nose or is this not a good nose? It's a little nice, show off the end gimmick. Yes, yes, yes. It's, 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 yeah, it's like you're very clever. Yes, you know very, everything. You yes. but, it, but then again, you're like, oh, you have six interns working for you and doing research about how what the population of Toledo yeah. is. Like, yeah. you know, it's it feels a little disingenuous like mm -hmm. it feels a little engineered there's some distance yep it, it and so it's lacking a little bit of heart it's lacking right. it's it's yeah. definitely this intellectual exercise right and it feels like a puzzle right that he's trying to put together right. as opposed to you know i think that this is all heart mm -hmm. duck's right. report Maybe is too just much. yeah <laughs> yeah right it's so much that you just your your heart starts to palpitate yeah. a little bit and right. you start yeah. to get a little anxious in with her and so it's this, this, the, the intellectual exercise, um, the puzzle versus the emotional, uh, heart wrenching kind of anxiety written. Right. Um, yeah. I, and I think that's, that's, I, I have a problem with Rashi. So there many times I've tried to read his books and I keep getting, getting off, put off because there is this, uh, intellectual, like you have to have. He, he assumes that you understand and you have this backlog of, of references to pull from mm -hmm. that only really works if you're, uh, you know, an Eton graduate or you're, right. you know, yeah. Oxbridge right. or, right. you know, where you study the classics or, you know, and, and yeah. it's just, I think pompous. we, yes, it's very, <laughs> very pompous, it, you know? yes. Yes. very, very pompous, very <laughs> arrogant, very, um, you know, this intellectualism over over experience and, and life. And I think that the three of us are incredibly well read. Um, and we, and, but we've also have this life experience and we'd like to draw from both and not just one. Mm -hmm. I would add to that also, I mean, don't get me wrong, you know, I'm good li liberal left, but I also think it's presumptuous in that it assumes that we are all aligned with his kind of scorn of mm -hmm. a lot of the American experience. Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. And, you know, kind of going to the least, the lowest common denominator. Yeah, like guns and the obesity and the fast food, you know, like talking about that. And um, it just, it, you know, <laughs> it's kind of like, you know, I can criticize America, but you don't get to criticize America. It's <laughs> interesting because you just made me ping light bulb. Both of these are outsiders mm -hmm. talking about the American experience in a way. And there's something about, now I realize what's, what's the thing that's can say not working for Kishot is that he's doing it from that outsider perspective right. so yes. it doesn't have the understanding of the complexities of right. how we is, got here how we got to where we are right. and like what it really is to have this like these like competing interests in this country right and what the good things are like well not to sound totally ridiculous but like why are you here like what was it that you were seeking like what what is the what is the American experience? What is the promise of the American mm -hmm. experience? We're not getting that. We're just getting the disappointment mm -hmm. of it. Um, Which, but I mean, I think that's also, I, I'm, I, I guess I'm not as um, 
against that uh, because his character is an Indian American, and so it's and so it's um, you know it would be I think it would feel different if he if he placed character as American born mm -hmm. for sure. You know, so I think that's I think that's fair and. And I think we've had so much lovey dovey about mm -hmm. the American experience. Yeah, yeah. I'm okay. I'm no, okay no, yeah. to get. Don't get me wrong. I'm okay to get. No, this. Of it's just it's a. Yeah. But I think everything that you guys are talking about is incredibly valid. I think it's almost that it, that there's so much superficiality in what Quixote is 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 providing, whereas we get so much more depth here, which is she needed a thousand pages mm -hmm. to kind of go right. into the connectedness of everything. And um, maybe. Yeah, maybe what's happening with Pichot, it's like it's kind of ham-fisted. Yeah. Yes. It's like the scene in, you know, when they're in the cafe or when they're in the hotel, and it doesn't really work that way. Right, I know. You know, that's like the way that it kind of, that the media portrays it. Right. But it's more complex, and I would think that, like, someone of Rushdie's status would, like, would really tease that out. But when has really Rushdie ever stayed in a Motel 6? <laughs> that's what I mean. When has so he ever eaten at Denny's? So it feels or, disingenuous. You know, red red you know, Luthien mm -hmm. or whatever. It feels yeah. like this is what I think is happening right. in yeah. America. It's yeah, like and it's elitist. Yeah. 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 They're just like really simple, like paint, painting brush, like broad strokes. Yes. Right. You know, as opposed, and that's not yeah. what you want writers to do. Right. You want yes. writers to like not generalize and just right. they think like, Oh, just because they pull up into a diner that this is going to happen. Like, right. give me some a little bit more complexity nuance. and yes. nuance of like what's really going on. Right. Because it's really not that like you know, the lack of safety as a brown person traveling in this country. It's not as overt as like just people starting to shout at you in right. a cafe. two times in a row. Like it's so yeah. much more subtle, and that's yeah. the stuff that really. And there's a lot of like ambiguity and like is this happening? Is this not happening? And it, right. he's painting it too like too clear and obvious. And maybe right. that's the point. And maybe because this right. character is kind of off, right? You know, maybe that's part of it. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's like part of the device is like that that character because the character is so rooted in television culture and mm -hmm. TV culture, which is broad strokes. Mm -hmm. So maybe like the way that the book is functioning is like in this broad stroke kind mm. of. I think that she deals so much in the micro aggressions and those slights mm -hmm. and the the subtle yeah. things that happen mm -hmm. and she just like obsesses over it and he she she doesn't feels even it. She, yeah. she feels she, it. they're darts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're darts. And the Whereas, way that they pop out it, for her, it's like they uh, squeezed and then they just pop out. I know. And then, like, yeah. little moments. But for him he doesn't even recognize the micro aggressions. Yeah. Right. There are they don't even exist. Well he's yeah. mentally ill. And yeah. he's mentally ill. Yeah. Yes. Now what do you guys I thought about this a lot vis a vis both of these books. It seems like they were both written like yesterday, just in terms yeah. of the, the pop culture references, the news references, the Trump stuff. Yes. And I think about that a lot when I read, because then you think like, if somebody reads it in 10 years, yeah. how are they going to feel? Are they going to be like, oh, ho-hum, mm -hmm. this is so dated? Mm -hmm. The same way when I read A New Yorker that's two years old because it does happen <laughs> i just skip over half of it because it's yeah. like who's gonna win the primary in indiana well i know how that happens so yeah. i can just skip yeah. it like how is it a liability to make it so topical and so timely or is it just like is it supposed to be like a little time capsule i think yeah. i i think it's a time capsule and i and i suspect that because everything is going so off the rails so fast uh globally in real life in real life, okay. in, the, in, in the real books. life, <laughs> and that, in the books. And in the yeah, books. <laughs> that that both of the that I I think my supposition is that Duck's New Report is going to sit as a as a real interesting reflection mm -hmm. on what it felt like to live in the moment. Mm -hmm. I don't think that Rush, the Rushdie will have the same impact because this is really about not just what's happening in the moment, but what happens to you. Yes. When you yeah. live through those That's moments. right. This yeah. is right. the deep inner monologue right. Right. as you're trying to make sense of the world around you right. and your place in it mm -hmm. and what power you have and what power you don't have. Mm -hmm. Whereas the Rushdie is just like a, a you know, it's, it's, a, cap it's a caper. Yeah. It's like right. set in this very weird time. Yeah. Right. It is a caper. There's, there's just it's like wacky hijinks. Yeah. Wacky hijinks. Yeah. 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 And, so and that's what Don Quixote is. It's, yeah, it's the original yeah, yeah, wacky yeah. hijinks yeah. story. Yeah. I don't know if I'm going to finish it. Oh, or you think you're going to wow. die? Oh, oh okay. well, you've got it library also. Like, so it's not like you're going to read, renew it or something if you don't finish it. I wasn't time. even thinking about that so oh, much. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, 
honestly, when I'm listening to it, I'm listening to like 75% of my attention. Mm -hmm. Like, um, but I think it's all that it requires. Yeah. 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 There's just, and it's a lot of blather. Mm -hmm. And all the yes. characters talk way too much. Yeah. 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 And, you know, it's like, where's the show don't tell? Like, I don't mm -hmm. need to hear all mm -hmm. of everything that's going through mm -hmm. all their yeah. minds. And, yeah. You know, yeah. it's just too much description and um, not enough reflection. But maybe that's that's a feature of the, the caper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, the yeah. wacky hijinks. Mm -hmm. like, I think I'll keep going. I think I I'm going to keep gonna going. I'm going to probably finish it. Sure. Well, it depends a little bit too on what we're reading next. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> oh, we do have 10 minutes, 38 seconds. That's the next one. That's our next one. 10 minutes, 38 seconds in this life. Yes. Remind me what that is. That's uh, the Elisha. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. So that's the next one. Is it slim? Yeah, it's, it's slimmer than this. <laughs> well, what is it? <laughs> it's slimmer than this. Let's see how long it is. 312. Wow. The hardcover is 312. That's, that's <laughs> nothing. Yeah, that's nothing. fine. So, in conclusion, <laughs> thank you. I want to thank you both for oh, joining sure. me, um, and um, I look forward to maybe more in the future. For sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Bye. Thanks.